in this section, we're going to break it up into two days. Two day, the first two days, we're going to graph secant and cosecant. And then the next two days, we're going to graph tangent and cotangent. So these graphs are not very hard to draw as long as you remember how to draw the sine and cosine graph. So let's start with cosecant. So remember that cosecant is 1 over sine. Now, because sine function is in a denominator, remember if you have a denominator that has an x, there is a potential for vertical asymptote, right? Well, what's going to create a vertical asymptote in a denominator? What's going to make the denominator undefined? When sine is what? When sine is 0, right? So if sine x equals 0, then you're going to have 1 over 0. 1 over 0 is undefined. So then this cannot be 0, which means we need to figure out where sine is 0 so we can avoid all those spots. So we're going to draw sine. So if you recall how to draw the sine graph, first we find the amplitude, which is 1. And then we find b, which is also 1. And then we find the period, in this case, is 2 pi over b. That is 2 pi. So we know that the sine graph has a period of 2 pi. So I'm going to draw this. So one period, half a period, quarter. And let's do it on the left. One period half period, the quarters. And then we know the amplitude is 1. I'm going to draw the sine graph. So sine, sine graph starts at 0, goes up, down, down, up, connect them. And then same thing on the left, down, up, up, down. Now this is not the cosecant graph. This is the sine graph. Now I'm going to draw this a cosecant graph. Cosecant graph first, we know that sine cannot be 0. So wherever I see a 0, that's where the asymptotes are, the vertical asymptotes. So wherever, wherever it crosses 0, I'm going to draw vertical asymptote. OK, the next part is even easier. What you're going to do is at the maximum, like so, you're going to draw a u. Oops, can't touch the person vertical asymptote. So like this. And then on the minimums, you're going to draw u pointing down. And that's it. That's your cosecant graph. OK, all right. Let's have you try this one. Cosecant 2x. So the only thing we change is just put a 2 there. So same thing as before. We change this to 1 over sine 2x. Starting from here, find that you're going to draw sine 2x, which from here you had to figure all that out. This is 2 pi over 2, so this is pi. So go ahead and draw um, the cosecant 2x graph. Okay, so one period, half period, quarter period, same thing here. Okay, and then uh, amplitude. Um, sine starts at zero, up, down, down, up. Same thing on the left. Okay, and then now we draw the cosecant graph. So wherever it crosses the zero, that's where I draw my asymptote. So it's a much smaller graph than before. So let's talk about transformation. You can see clearly that there is a 2 inside the, the function. So there's something that's happening with horizontal stretch or compress. Remember that to figure out if it's um, 
we know that it's a horizontal stretch or compressed, but that two is in the wrong place. So to put it in the right place, we have to put the two as a reciprocal in the denominator. So this is one half. So that tells us this is a horizontal compress of one half. And you can clearly see that this is a horizontally compressed graph from before. All right, let's try the next one, secant. So again, this is the same idea. So this is one over cosine. So same thing. Now, instead of drawing sine, you're going to draw cosine. And then wherever cosine reaches zero, you're going to draw the as vertical asymptotes and then draw the u's. OK, so go ahead and try this one and then come back and check your answer. OK, please check your answer. Did you get the correct graph? All right, so let's go ahead and try this one. OK, so we're going to graph this one. Uh, let's, let me kind of help you do this one together. So this is 2 secant x over 2. So what you're going to do is kind of change it. So this is 1 over cosine x over 2. Notice how I put the 2 there. It really doesn't matter where I put the 2, I, I guess, at this time, because um, uh, it's just a stretch of the function. So when you draw cosine x over 2, you do need this 2 as part of the amplitude, um, just so that you can have a correct secant graph. OK, so let's draw this cosine graph. So the amplitude is 2. B in this case is 1 half. So uh, period is 2 pi over B, which is 2 pi divided by 1 half, which is 2 pi times reciprocal, that is 4 pi. Now, if you look at our graph, we only have up to 2 pi. So what happens? Um, well, you can either draw 4 pi here, somewhere here, and then just say, oh, half of it is here, and then realize, oh, OK, so 2 pi is just half of the period. Um, that, or just kind of realize, OK, well, 4 pi, and then I see 2 pi, that's half of it, so it must be half of the period. OK, quarter of that, which just means another half of that, and then go to the left. So same thing here, that's half of it, and then half of it again. This one has an amplitude of 2, like that. So from here, you're going to draw cosine. OK, so this is not the entire period, so this is only half a period. So that means this is the starting point. This is the 0. OK, and then it goes down here, that's it like that. OK, so go ahead and fit, uh, pause the video and then finish the graph and then come back and check your answer. All right, go ahead and check your answer. Now, same thing as before, we are going to find the transformation, but this one's pretty easy. Just find it from 2 secant x. So the only transformation that happened is this 2 in the denominator, and we know the transformation is horizontal stretch of 2. All right, the last part we're going to do is just do one analysis. This is a little tricky. Um, you can use decimals to graph and do the analysis from there, um, you know, which is totally fine. But you do need to change the x axis so that it's showing you in pi or which is the radian um, or else it might be kind of difficult to analyze. I'm going to analyze based on the graph I'm going to draw. So I'm going to draw secant 2x. OK, this is 1 over cosine 2x. So that tells me amplitude is 1, b is 2, period is 2 pi over 2, which is pi. OK. So I'm just going to draw this much instead of filling up the entire graph. OK, asymptotes. Mm -hmm. 
and then the graph. Okay. All right. So based on this graph here, I'm going to analyze first domain. I know this is definitely not all real numbers because I have vertical asymptotes everywhere. So the question is, where are the vertical asymptotes? I can see that it's happening at pi over 4, and then it happens again at uh, 3 pi over 4, and the same thing on the left, negative pi over 4. So I what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a, a way of describing all of them at once. So first, I have to notice what this length is. So this is pi over 4. This is 3 pi over 4. You can ask yourself, what is the distance between them? So you can do 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 4, which is 2 pi over 4. Reduce that, pi over 2. So I know that length is very consistent, pi over 2. So every pi over 2, something is happening. But starting from where? It started from pi over 4. Or you can just pick any of the asymptotes you start with. And then I'm going to say that. And then every time I go pi over 2 more, it I reach another vertical asymptote. Um, so every time I reach another pi over 2 means pi over 2 n, meaning I you know, I go 1 pi over 2 over, and then 2 pi over 2 over, or 3 pi over 2 over, and just tells me how many times over. So n is an integer. So I can go to the right, that's the positive integers, or I can go to the left, which is the negative integers. OK, so those are my integer domain. Where is my range? So the secant graph is only the, the red graph. The blue graph is just the guideline from cosine to help me graph the secant graph, but the, the red graph is the only uh, secant graph. So if you look at the red graph only, where is the range? Well, I know that this graph keeps going down, but it stops right here. And then there's nothing in between if I take out the blue graph, and then it starts from here up. So how do I write that? I know it starts from negative infinity, and then it start, stops at negative 1. And there's a solid point at negative 1, so I'm going to include it. And then no graph, because that blue graph does not actually exist. Um, and then I start at 1 and goes up forever. OK, increasing, decreasing is quite tricky. So let's take a few increasing areas. So you can see this is increasing. This is increasing, this is increasing, and this is increasing. Remember, increasing means from left to right. So I can see that there is a pattern to this, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick just two of them that looks different because this that pattern starts to repeat again. So I'm not going to talk about the same thing again. And then I'm going to just describe that. From, from where to where is this part increasing? Well, it's increasing from this x point to this x point. So that is from 0 to pi over 4. Do I include 0? Do I include pi over 4? I do need to include 0 because there's an actual point. I don't include pi over 4 because there's no point there. There's, that's a vertical asymptote. This shape will keep repeating every period because this, this is a repeating uh, pattern. So how often does it repeat? Well, whatever the period is, which is pi. So instead of writing this that only describes one pair, I'm going to take this pair and then say it's, uh, it's every pi n. And same thing with pi over 4, it's every pi n. But I have another part of this increasing. That's right here. From which x to which x? From pi over 4 to pi over 2. And then so same thing here. Pi over 4 plus pi n to 
pi over 2 plus pi and but this time I include it because there's an actual point. Okay, let's look at decreasing. This part's decreasing, this part's decreasing, this part's decreasing, this part's decreasing. Again, there's a lot of repeating shape. So what I'm going to do is just take any two shape that doesn't repeat and then write that. Okay, I can see that it started re decreasing at this point to this point. So this is starting at pi over 2, stops at 3 pi over 4. So start at pi over 2 because there's an actual point, so I include it. But it repeats every pi n, and it stops at 3 pi over 4 plus pi n. But this time, I don't include it because there's an asymptote. And then starts again at 3 pi over 4 plus pi n to where that point is, which is at pi, and then plus pi n. There's an actual point, so include it. OK, this is pretty tricky. So uh, if you have questions, make sure to ask me in class. OK, continuity. Um, this is. Uh, infinite discontinuity because of the vertical asymptote. Symmetry. So if you look at this, um, you ask yourself, can I fold it over the y-axis and it looks the same? Or can I rotate it around the origin and it looks the same? This is folding it across the y-axis, so this is even. Boundedness, this is not bounded because it keeps going up and down forever. Local max and min. OK, so you can see that on this graph, change it to a different color. Local max is here. So let's describe that. So local max, we can see that the first one is at negative pi over um, negative pi over 2. And that shape is going to repeat again every period, so pi n. The local min are these ones here. So you can see that is x equals 0, and then repeats every pi n. Vertical asymptote is always going to go with the domain, because that's what's causing the domain to not be all real numbers, so we can just copy that again. And behavior, the left and right just keeps going up and down, up and down, so there is no end behavior. 